Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dan and welcome back to my kitchen for another unboxing and review video. Today I am joined by Creality's brand new Spark X i7 Color Combo AI 3D printer. Let's open her up, shall we? That was everything. Four bolts. It is essentially almost ready to go. All I have to do now is connect the CFS light to the Spark X. The 90 degree six pin connects here. The other end, the four PTFE tubes. I do it in one go. Alrighty, so the unboxing was extremely quick. There were four bolts, one wire, four PTFE tubes, so eight plugins. Uh, it took me like three minutes, if that. This was the fastest unboxing and printer setup I have ever done. Oh, as I was saying, yeah, this was the fastest printer setup I've ever done. I am really excited about testing this thing out. So I'm going to move her over to the print room and get her set up. After getting the printer set up and powering it on for the first time, I ran through the startup process. I picked the language, made sure all the shipping stuff was removed, and yes, definitely read through the entire privacy policy. I connected it to Wi-Fi, scanned the QR code, and linked the printer to my Creality Cloud account using the app on my phone. From there, it ran the self-check process, which took about 10 minutes. Once that was finished, I updated it to the latest firmware and ran an auto-leveling calibration. I loaded in two spools of Creality Hyper PLA, which have RFID tags that automatically sync the filament settings to the printer. If you're using generic or other brand filaments, you can just manually add or edit the filament details directly on the printer's filament screen, which is pretty easy and straightforward. Ah! Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my hardwood floor. To quickly run over the specs of the 3D printer. The build plate itself is 260 by 260 by 255 millimeters, which is a pretty good size for most projects, and it's technically larger than most of the Core XY machines on the market. And it's got a magnetic PEI build plate. Reality says that this will go to 500 millimeters per second. It's got a direct drive extruder, and it's also got a built-in camera for time lapses, print monitoring, and AI detection. It also handles auto leveling, Z offset, and input shaping before every single print, so you're not really having to babysit it. Another cool feature is the fact that you can send prints directly from your phone rather than having to use the slicer on your computer. Creality has also redesigned the hot end on here, making the nozzle swapping super simple. You simply take off the cover, pop up the latch, and then slide the nozzle out. The CFS light is the four roll filament management system. The lid opens from the front and four rolls can be placed inside. And all of this retails for $339 right now, which is absolutely insane that you can get all of this for that price. I'm not being paid for anything that I'm saying here. Let's get into it. Slicer time. The slicer itself is very simple to use, and honestly, you don't even have to use it if you'd rather just print from your phone. You can download it directly from Creality's website, and once you're signed in, your printer should automatically show up. If it doesn't, you can scan the QR code from the printer using your phone, or you can manually add it in the slicer. Either way, the slicer is super quick and painless to set up. For the first print, I went with the filament poop bucket that comes preloaded on the printer. I printed it using Creality's Blue Hyper PLA. The print took just under an hour and used less than 50 grams of filament. I was honestly extremely impressed with how clean it came out. The layer lines were very consistent, especially considering it's only about one wall thick. The bottom layer was also super smooth and looked really nice. It was a solid first print and looks really good. Next, using Creality's Red Hyper PLA, I printed the Flexi Octopus that's also included on the printer. This one took an hour and a half and used about 20 grams of filament. The print came out looking great. It stuck really well to the build plate, but popped off super easily once it cooled. The layer lines were very consistent across the entire octopus, the flexibility was good, and the overhangs and individual pieces all looked really clean. It's also pretty fun to play with, but it's just a Flexi Octopus at the end of the day. I also despise these things. All in all, solid print, on to the next one. For the third print, I wanted to try out the CFS system. I found a AA battery holder on printables and then threw it in the slicer. I painted the box silver and the letters black and then sliced it and sent it to the printer. After a few hours, it was done and the print basically popped off the build plate. The bottom surface looked fantastic and even on the fastest print settings, it still looked really good. I didn't have the super smooth option enabled so you can see a bit of ribbing on the walls, but everything fit together perfectly and the battery slid right in. Overall, this is a really solid print and it's super useful. For the fourth print, I wanted to test a large flexible model. I grabbed this Cobra model from printables and threw it in the slicer. I scaled it up to 120% and used all basic settings. I also have this beautiful iridescent blue purple filament that I wanted to use. After slicing it, I sent it to the printer. 
and after seven and a half hours, it finished and looked incredible. It slid right off the build plate once I picked it up. It printed very consistently and stayed flexible with no issues at all. Everything moved properly and it looked really nice. Ah! Next, I wanted to test tolerances, so I printed these Gridfinity cases from printables. I put the files in the slicer and used the maximum size I could that could fit on the build plate. The top and bottom were printed in red Hyper PLA and came out looking extremely clean. All the faces looked amazing. The build plate face looked super smooth, but also the inside and the walls looked really clean. I then printed the two latches and handle in black Hyper PLA. Everything printed super fast and without any issues. Using bolts I removed from another 3D printer, I bolted it together. Two bolts for the lid, four bolts for the latches, and then two bolts for the handle. There were no tolerance issues and everything looked really clean and functioned as a proper rugged case. This took about 8 hours of printing and 300 grams of plastic and it looks fantastic. The printer kept sending me notifications about a retract issue that kept popping up. So I went ahead and disassembled the hot end and after removing all of the bolts I noticed this tiny little piece of black plastic that had broken off from the filament inside of the extruder. Now I'm pretty sure this was some pretty old filament that I was using, but all in all this took like 5 minutes to disassemble and after I took that piece of filament out everything lined up perfectly and started printing just fine after. And for the final test, D&D. I swapped out all of the filament and used Creality's Hyper PLA in gray, black, and gold to print the chest of superior tracking. Which is a really cool D&D dice box that I found over on Maker World. I dropped the 3MF into the slicer and after rearranging and coloring everything, slicing took basically no time. I printed each build plate one by one. The top lids took the longest and popped off the build plate easily. The supports peeled off of the parts and the surfaces looked really nice. The lids looked amazing being printed in the multicolor. Both parts were super smooth and lined up properly. After just under a full day, all of the parts were done. The detail across all of the parts was excellent and the filament swapping with the CFS system was quick and easy. The only hiccup that I experienced was the number rollers. I had to reprint these four times because I had two power outages at exactly the wrong moments. The printer does have power loss recovery, but there was such a slight layer line that bothered me across them, so I scrapped it and reprinted it. After that, everything came out perfect. Once everything was done printing, I assembled it using 3D Gloop. The colored plates and sliders easily fit into place. The counter wheels and axles also fit nicely into the lid. The cover fit perfectly onto the flat faces and there was no interference. After assembling the lid onto the other side, I glued the panels onto the side of the box. I attached the locking latch and thumbstick and then snapped the lid into place. The latch slides open clean, the hinges rotate super smooth, and the counters spin freely. The tolerances were perfect. The overall print feels really solid and I'm genuinely impressed with how well this printer handled all of the details. This thing looks fantastic. I'm really blown away by it. Ah! Alrighty guys, it's time for my thoughts. I've been using this printer for about a week, week and a half now, and I've put about 120 hours on it, and I have to say I really enjoy it. It is a bed slinger, but it comes almost fully assembled, and unboxing and setup literally took me two minutes to do. You're getting the printer, which is basically a 260 millimeter cube build volume, and a four roll filament system for $330. The printer itself is really quiet, it's very fast, I really can't specify enough how simple and easy this printer is to use. I also really do appreciate the fact that Creality made swapping out the nozzle so simple and easy to do. I didn't have any major issues with this printer other than that broken piece of filament that I found. I managed to disassemble the entire hot end, which was four bolts, and find the piece of filament and remove it and replace the thing in like five minutes. This has genuinely been a really enjoyable printer. This is perfect for kids, beginners, or anyone wanting to get into 3D printing without a lot of setup or hassle. I also want to say thank you to Creality for sending me out this printer. I've really enjoyed using it and I'm going to continue using it in the future. If you were interested in anything you saw in the video, I put all of the links in the description below. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.